hello everyone what's good what's popping welcome welcome back to my channel it's your girl caroline back again with another start to finish wig install tutorial or better yet should i say a truly start to finish wig install tutorial okay not only are we going to be covering how i get my long lasting glueless installs and how i maintain them over a few couple of days then how i remove my installs how i wash my lace how i wash the wig and to bring it right back home how i reinstall the wig right after the lace has been cut so it's really start middle finish then start all over again like who you know doing truly start to finish wig install tutorials like this I'll wait yeah that's what I thought no one so with that said if you're interested in any of this information and you want to spend some time with your girl Caroline then sit back relax let's get right into today's tutorial Okay, let's hop right into it. The wig I'm going to be installing today was from Asteria Hair Company. They sent me their 250% density 26 inch body wave wig. It is a 13 by 6 HD lace frontal. And right out of the box, I was really impressed with how well they pre customized the wig. It came pre plucked, pre bleached, and a little middle part parted down the middle, which would make installation really nice and easy. I can tell they were going for the whole ready out the box concept because they even added these little pre curled curls in there. But spoiler alert, they do not last after you brush or wash them out. But I mean, I'll give them a little A for effort for adding that there. Key to a good long lasting glueless installer, any install in general, is all about the foundation, the prep that you do. You gotta set yourself up for success. Honestly, I'm really lazy when it comes to doing my wig installs, so I like to keep things quite simple. But I don't do any bald cap, none of that. But that's mainly because I use glueless installs, so I don't need any bald cap protecting my edges from glue. But I do like to make sure I push back my edges so I can have a clean, slick canvas. And I try to make sure my braids are decently flat enough. These are old braids, they're not super flat or fresh, but they will do if I was doing like a bone straight slicked type of hairstyle these braids would probably be a little bit too old to get the nice flat look but for a little bit of texturing your hair you don't need the braids to be too flat but you also can't have your hair too bumpy after slicking my edges back i like to go in with a wipe that has some micellar water just to wipe down my forehead and around my whole hairline where the lace is going to be sitting because i don't want any product even skincare get in the way of my adhesive spray whatever i like to call it lasting long the key to a long lasting install as well is having a clean forehead to work on really it for my hair prep now i'm going to do some wig prep which just really involves me tinting the lace with my foundation that is the exact shade of my forehead. Thank goodness they already took away of the other type of prep like the plucking and the bleaching. It's already customized for us. So all the thing I really gotta do is just tint it to match my exact skin tone. To buff my foundation underneath the lace versus on top. One, to avoid making the hair get dirty with makeup and two, to make it look less cakey. I feel like when I apply it on top of the lace, it looks a lot cakier versus underneath, which gets more seamless look. Last bit of wig prepping, I guess, is I go ahead and make sure I am adjusting my elastic band and the other elastic band that comes inside the wig just to make sure everything fits my head shape perfectly. You guys understand how happy I was to realize that this wig comes with not just clips, an adjustable strap, and a removable band. Everything you need for a secure, long-lasting wig. Because a lot of these companies, they be forgetting to add all of that. And then the last bit of prep is what I like to call my lace prep. I like to just go in and cut off any excess lace that kind of falls around my ears. This part sometimes can be a little bit hard. I'm always too scared to cut off too much lace. Now it's going to be too short around my ears. But I do have a really detailed tutorial, like taking my time, explaining how I perfectly get a good cut around my ears and a custom fit. So if you want to get more information on that, go ahead and check that out. But now we are ready to install the wig. My wigs, I like to go for the glueless adhesive route, meaning it's not glue, like bold hold lace bond, but at the same time, it is sticky enough for it to get that lace stuck, but it comes off easily with water, unlike glue, which actually needs alcohol or some stronger type of agent to take it off. Using the Ebon Wonder Lace Spray, which is essentially a hairspray that is strong enough to help layer lace especially this blue keratin one i feel like this one's my favorite one because it's the most long lasting at the same time it has biotin and keratin so it's been kind of low-key helping my edges grow back recently i've been pairing that with this lace melt mousse i prefer to cut off my lace and then spray it down i feel like this way you just have a lot more control and you get less of that white cast when you do it the other way where you 
lay it down then cut out the lace after i feel like this way is a lot better so what i do is all right i spray underneath the lace for the sides and i use my fingers to spread that product out even to like the back of my edges because there is lace behind the front part of my hairline and i like to pull out some baby hairs like i'm doing right here on the sides kind of to use it as an anchor to really help me pull down that lace because i already cut the lace off and since the sides are the hardest in my opinion to stick down i always have to do like a double spray and spray over the lace as well and make sure i'm patting and tapping that out to not get like a big chunk Key residue somewhere and I go in with my blow dryer on a cool not cold but like warm setting I wouldn't say hot it's a warm setting and it's a medium power I don't want it too hot and going too fast because I make the, the lace dry too fast I have to go in and just start pressing and pushing down that lace to get it to stick to my head like I'm using that rat tail comb and really just paying attention to detail so you got to work in section and making sure I'm pressing everything down if you're trying to get like a long lasting glueless hold using your blow dryer and pressing everything down is essential for the first install because this way you're going to be making sure you're locking in that got to be not got to be that ebb and spray and getting everything really nice and dry and it's important to work in sections because in sections is the only way for you to actually like focus on each piece of lace to avoid lifting you can usually feel when the lace is like stuck to your skin properly once i feel it nice and stuck i go ahead and do the next section the next section is a little bit different since i can't lift it up like i do on the sides i just spray on the top of the lace but i make sure that i'm spraying mainly on towards the edge like i don't want to spray into the hair itself i'm trying to stick the lace not the hair and to get more accurate precision i like to spray and use my fingers to tap and spread the product out versus spraying everywhere in hopes that it gets to where it be i just spray a little spot and i use my finger to tap and spread that product out and same thing like before, I go in that blow dryer and just start locking in everything. I don't mind having a little spray on the roots because I actually like to use that little stickiness to help with my blow dryer. Kind of push my roots and hair upward to get it like a natural fall. And there you go. That is how I install my wigs without using any glue whatsoever. It's giving glued the way it's so melted and just like seamless. I like to add an elastic band onto my lace after I install it to really help that glue set or the spray set. But before I add the elastic band, I do like to go in and dry all across my head and make sure the lace is not sticky before I add the band. Because if you add the band on and your lace is still sticky and tacky, what's going to happen is when you take off that band later, it's going to take the wig off with it because you want the band to melt to the lace we don't want the the lace to melt to the band that makes sense i leave my band on for as long as i have patience for people say leave it on for an hour you get a more melted look i don't really find that to be true in my personal experience i just feel like letting the band stay on there for a while it just gives a moment to really while the lace is setting i'm going in and just doing some plucking behind the hairline even though this wig did come pre-plucked y'all know me i like a super hyper realistic it could be her own hair type of look and since my natural hair is more thin towards the front i went in and just started plucking behind the pre-plucked section because i've learned for a super Super hyper realistic look it's not about really plucking crazy in the front of the hairline it's more plucking backwards and taking that pluck further back into the hairline so I'm just going in with my tweezers in a pluck skip pluck skip motion to kind of just thin out that hairline but I also make sure I'm not plucking directly on the line that I parted out plucking on that parted out line will create like a bald spot when you push all that hair back to the front want to know how like i create my natural hairline with my plucking i did just release like a super detailed start to finish as always plucking tutorial bleaching all of that that kind of shows exactly how i create my hyper realistic hairlines so if you want to get more information and details go ahead don't be shy and check that out as well i'll try to like link these either in the description box or above on this clip but once i've plucked behind the hairline i push everything back and now i'm going in and just creating a little more like hairline strokes little gaps or striations in between the hair to really just thin it out a little bit more not too much because like i said this wig was pre-plucked but i just wanted to create a little more openings in the hair so you could really see that like natural hairline look once i was done plucking the hair i went ahead and took off my elastic band i did get some lifting here on the side but i realized it's mainly because this wig was not fully tight onto my head it was actually kind of wrinkling or crinkling a bit in the front and that was because i did not properly adjust the elastic band in the back of the wig but i did that later on and that really helped fix the whole crumple wrinkled look so if your lace is wrinkling and crumpling probably you just need to tighten up that elastic band in the back of the wig but back to the install here i'm just going in and using that mousse that i was talking about earlier to help touch up some of the lace that was lifting right there and i like using this loose 
using this mousse for my edges slash baby hair i feel like it's like a great two-in-one product because one it's great for your baby hairs and it's a lightweight option for touching up your lace i feel like it's not strong enough for a long lasting overnight hold like the spray but it gives it a light hold to your lace for like a little like you know throw on and go situation but i like using it for my baby hairs because while i'm doing the baby hairs i'm also like melting the lace that's on the edge by the baby hairs I've been doing a lot of no baby hair installs, but even when I'm doing no baby hairs, I always have to add a little side swoop, side burn situation right here. I don't know, it just kind of completes the look to me. But essentially that is really it for the initial glueless install. Now the next few clips are gonna be showing you how I preserve this wig, the style, my installs in general overnight. Hi guys, we back. So fun fact, it's actually the end of this is day two of me installing this wig. I installed this wig yesterday. This is the end of the second day. Where's my wigs for too long? Because I just like to take my wigs off at night. Like I get hot. Even when I wear my wigs at night, sometimes I'll wake up in the night and take them off. Like I just get so hot. That's why I'm a, a glueless wig girly. Cause I don't know, even if I could use glue, I don't like using glue cause I don't like sleeping my wigs. But I wanted to test out just how long wear this spray is because one of my friends was telling me like she's been using i put her on and she was like grandma wigs be stuck for like three days i'm like what three days so i was like let me test it out but then i was like let me show you guys what i've been doing as well to help maintain and like sleep in the wig to help maintain the install because for day two so far there's no much there's, there's not too much lifting just like a little bit right here on the side but still i'm still pretty pretty quite impressed because the times where i have worn this one guys i used to use this one before i got to the blue one the times i've worn this one overnight the next day usually towards the end of the day i'll get like a little bit more lifting so i feel like like this sticks a lot better than this one which, but this is so funny because this one is marketed as like a stronger hold but this came out after this one did come out after they made this so maybe i don't know something about what they got in this bottle just really eats and plus cleaning my forehead of no like makeup and residue or whatever oils really does help with the sticking so let's say at the end of the night if you do have like any lifting towards the end of the day of course you want to go ahead and take care take care of that either by using this i feel like i like using this a lot more for like touch-ups than this i feel like this after a while it does start to build up versus this which does not build up because more lightweight so for touch-ups one thing i'm learning about this is that when you put it on like i guess i'm gonna put it on right here when you put it on you don't blow dry it the way that i blow dry this one to dry like you just put it on let it melt where you want and then you get your elastic band and not just when i say elastic band I don't mean these type of elastic bands. These is out. I don't like these type of bands. You gotta use these sewing elastic bands, like regular fabric bands. I get this from Amazon. I used to get it from, from Walmart in the sewing section. These stick better. These won't stick to your lace as much as this will. And one thing I learned about this mousse, cause y'all know I was telling y'all like, to prevent your lace sticking to your band, make sure it's dry properly before you go in with the band. With this, I'm realizing you actually, because even the instructions said that you actually have to put the mousse while it's still wet. You put your band on, and I'm going to put my band on. So wherever you have any lifting or whatever, go ahead and put that band on while it's still wet. Make sure I get it on there. Make sure the band is on the lace. It's the lace we're trying to lay, not the hair. The hair is secondary. But I gotta also make sure I tuck it behind my ears. Oof. And since I'm someone who gets hot at night, I don't like having my band on too tight. Put this on nice and secure, not too tight, because I will get a headache at night. And then, since it's a body wave hair, I'm just gonna go ahead and style it real for my body wave. Yesterday when I installed this wig, I didn't really do much of a styling to it. I just wanted to rock the curls that it came with in the box. It, but I think today I'm going to do some styling. I think I'm going to do some, um, what's it called? Some flexi rods to it since, it's over, since we're doing overnight looks. Just going to do some flexi rods so I can have a style and be cute tomorrow.
Versace shirt. They just don't wear Versace shirts. It ain't 2013. It ain't hard to see. 2013, brother. It's 2023. The other thing is, the Migos been stuck wearing that shit. That Migos. Now the flexi rides, we don't know about that. So I'll talk about that. Okay, we'll, we'll hope, let's hope they come out cute tomorrow. I'm trying something new out. But anyways, now that I have my band on, it's been on my ear for a minute. And just like I already see that piece that was sticking, it's already stuck. But I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the back of my head. Make sure the band is not too tight and comfortable for the night. And then what I like to do, I like to get like, I get this bonnet that has like, satin i got like a tie on it i had to get the satin one i got this from amazon i actually got this from shein even cheaper i'm thinking like a dollar i get all my bonnets by the way i was wondering where i get my bonnets from these two that i love to wear shein shein's the best place to get cute cheap bonnets anyways so like i was saying i like to get these type of bonnets with the tie on them and i like the tie on them specifically to help tie as an extra layer Hold on, gotta get these rods in there. Ugh, it's about to be so hot sleeping all this tonight. That's another thing why I don't like sleeping with my wig on. Cause having all of this bonnet and double tying my head, it's, it, it's, it get hot, okay? It's uncomfortable. I'm, I like to sleep comfortable. That's why I don't like doing lash extensions, honestly. I don't like having stuff on my eyes. I can't just sleep anyhow with lash extensions, but I'm trying to be more of an everyday cute baddie or whatever, which involves having my hair done. So I'm trying to make myself get used to wearing my wigs a lot more often. Cause I really don't be wearing them that much that often unless I'm going somewhere. But at the same time, I, that means whenever I'm not wearing my wig, I just be like having anything on my head or I just be rocking my braids. <sighs> this year I'm trying to like be more put together, like look more put together. So, yeah. Anyways, so whenever I have these wigs on, I don't wear this type of bonnet that has no tie because it's not gonna have no protection. But having this that has a tie on it definitely is gonna give some uh, protection to it. But you have, I've learned you gotta wear the wig for it to stay in your head. You have to wear the band a little bit lower. I'm gonna make it too tight. Not too tight, so I'm gonna have I don't have like a line line of demarcation from the elastic band. Just tight enough to keep it on my head though. Actually I'm gonna tie it up here. If that makes sense. So that way I don't get a line of demarcation because the band is down here. Yeah, and that is essentially it, how I wear it at night. So I'm gonna show you guys in the morning what I do to like touch up, keep it together, and just also continue to see how long and how well these products can stay on our heads <sighs> hello everyone hi next day morning well morning to me i just finished showering and washing my face okay let's see how what we are working on this is day three of having this hair installed i feel like this time there's a little bit of lifting Sometimes too, like I try to take, I try to leave the band on as long as I can after my shower 
because sometimes the steam can cause it to lift a little bit. So I let's like let it dry before I take off the band. But let's see what we're working with. I don't know if these flexi rods gonna look right, but that's not the main point. Ooh, ooh snap. I'm a rough sleeper. Like I have a little bit of lifting right here because this is where like when I wash my face it gets wet. But uh, I want to take the band off first or the flexi rods first? I guess I'm gonna take the band off first. Okay, it's still looking at pretty good. This is day three. I have a little bit of lifting right here because like where I wash my face, like a little bit right here. I feel like I was more diligent with this side. And a little lifting up here. My thing with this is I feel like it takes the makeup that I have on under the lace off a bit. So like eventually I'm gonna have to like go back and like put some more makeup on the lace because I feel like the white cast is starting to show. And just tap it to the spots that are lifting. Just tap, don't do too much. Right here is lifting a little bit. Just gently tap it in. Right here. And then I can put the band back on because this doesn't, it melts better without like blow drying. I learned blow drying honestly doesn't really do much for this mousse like the spray does. So while that is, while we're doing our little touch ups on the lace, ow, I'm gonna take these flexi rods out. See what we'll be working with. I don't have too much hope for these. Battery's about to die, so if it cuts off, but I come back with my flexi rods out, just know my battery died. My hair still kind of wet. It feels a bit kind of wet. Oops. Should I take this out? Oh lord. They're nice and bouncy. I'll give them that. They're so bouncy. Like, what? Okay. Bounce, bounce. Ow. All right. I don't even know what I want to use styling wise. I guess I'm just gonna like run. I'm just gonna like, um, come through them. I want to run my fingers through them. Okay, let's make this look a bit more like something. Okay, it's now the end of day three and I'm gonna take it off now. Even though I did fix the rippling in the wig, I still, I'm about to install another wig 
Cause you know, work, work, don't stop or whatever. You know, I'm going out tonight and I wanna wear something different. This is not the vibe for the night. So I'm gonna take this off. But now I can show you guys how I take it off. Funny enough, even before I'm on the camera, I forgot how to take this off. I was about to take it off like a barbarian and start ripping. And I was like, oh, she's on there. And the whole point of this is to not lose our edges. So <laughs> this is how you properly take it off. If I'm like in a rush and I'm being lazy, I will just put my hair up like in a little bun and hop in the shower and let the steam of the shower come off with me. Because I don't like getting wet all at once. I'm not a, I don't I don't know. I don't like getting wet. <laughs> but since I can't find my shower cap and I've been having this wig on for three days, I'm ready to take it off and wash my head. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um yeah, so I'm just gonna get, you just need water. So, so a spray bottle with just water. Spraying the hairline, get it nice and wet. And depending on how like already willing the wig is ready to come off, you don't have to do too much. Cause I also don't wanna like ruin the hairline. So instead of rubbing, I can just press. You just want it to get a little wet. You don't have to tug. Sometimes just be patient. That's why if you're not patient, just get in the shower with the wig, put your hair up in a clip, start to wash your face, and literally it'll get wet like that. Usually this part comes off easily. All right. Like, that's how we do that, huh? With the parts where you have hair on, I feel like, because my edges are down here, that's the part it sticks to the most. Or I mean, because I, so it's harder, but just, you know, there you go. There you go, there you go. Oop. Voila. Oof, feels kind of gross. And that is how. Ow. And that is how we take off our wig safely. And I usually just like let this dry. You just let it dry. Cause right now it's gonna be like all sticky and gooey. Let it dry and you're able to put it back on. But in the next clip, it's since it's like has a little bit of product buildup on it, just a tad, just a little bit of product buildup. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you guys how I wash my wigs. There are two ways I go about washing my wig. There's washing the lace and then washing the actual wig. If it's just like a little like lace touch up situation where the lace is all crusty but the hair is still fine, it just needs like to be clean because it's not laying as nicely anymore. Then I just go in with this dry shampoo from ORS. It's a herbal cleanse shampoo. I literally just apply that onto the lace itself, let it sit for a bit, and then go in with a little wipe and just start wiping off the hairline. This is a great easy way to clean off your lace without having to go and run it under a sink and get your whole wig wet. Now let's say this is a heavily worn wig and like the lace is dirty, the wig itself is limp and dry and just needs a refresh. This is when I go and actually wash my wig, like run it under the sink and do a proper washing and this is what I do to do that. First I like to go in with a little bit of just antibacterial dish soap. I've been using this forever, I don't know, I just, something about it just helps clean my lace a lot better than regular shampoo. I just go in and start scrubbing and scrunching the lace together just to clean everything out, wash out the makeup, wash out the spray products residue just get that lace nice and squeaky clean again I usually know it's clean once the lace has turned back to its regular transparent color because all the foundation has been washed off and then to wash my actual wig itself I start off with this silicone mix shampoo I just like the silicone mix brand in general it kind of just like coats your hair with the silicone which is great for sealing the ends and helping add some like shine and softness to your hair and I like the shampoo I feel like it's not super stripping and drying to the hair but at the same time it's very effective it helps cleanses the hair thoroughly I'm gonna show you guys what I do whenever I have like tangles because sometimes especially if it's been a wig that you've worn a lot you'll get some tangles and knots in it it's okay don't stress if you can run your hands through it while it's shampooing go ahead and do that but if you can't just shampoo it clean and leave it in its like tangled state don't try to detangle it if it can't tangle detangle easily when it's being shampooed just like leave it alone just try your best to wash it right once I've properly shampooed and rinsed it out, I go in with this mixture of the silicone mix conditioner with a squirt of this Garnier, I believe. I'll link it down below. Garnier 
leave-in con deep conditioner these two together it's like my holy grail for getting my wigs to bounce back to life get them nice and soft and manageable again i let this sit in the hair for either overnight if i have time to spare but minimum 15 minutes just let it sit and soak up all that juice it's usually after the hair has been sitting in the conditioner is when i feel comfortable enough to go and try to really detangle any knots that i have in the hair because the conditioner is going to help soften up the hair so it's going to be easier to just detangle it so i always say don't try detangling when it's wet in the shampooing state try detangling it after it's sit in conditioner for a bit now i'm just going in and properly washing out the hair making sure i get everything thoroughly because i hate whenever i leave conditioner spots in my wigs so i try my best to just wash everything out once I've washed the wig out completely, I like to let it just air dry overnight or maybe outside if it's a warm day. I don't like using a blow dry or anything to dry my wigs. I feel like they just have more flow and body to them when I let them air dry themselves. I've showed you how to initially install, how to keep it on your head, how to remove it, how to wash it. Now I'm going to show you guys how I put it right back on, okay? Now depending on if it's like a wash lace install versus just a next day install, if the lace has already been cleaned off like this one, I go in and add that foundation again. You guys are always asking how often do I tint my lace with foundation. I don't tint it that often. I only, only tint it after the lace has been washed and the foundation has been cleared off. Normally the foundation does last a couple of wears under my lace, so I don't do that often. But now I'm going back in and tinting it again because like I said, I did wash the lace of this wig. Again, I went ahead and did my same prep, slicked my edges back, cleaned my forehead, and just put on the wig. And this time, since it's gonna be a reinstall, it's a lot easier, much more just spray here, spray there, blow dry, and you're ready to go. Once I have the wig on, I go ahead and start from the sides like always, and I lift it up and I spray underneath with that ebon spray. And I always gotta make sure I'm tapping and spreading it out my finger. I don't like to use too much of the spray. That's how you get like lots of residue and you get lots of cakiness. Using your finger to spread it and thin it out and put it where you want it is the best way to avoid getting extra residue. And whenever you're doing a reinstall, I don't have to work in sections meticulously like I do whenever I'm doing an initial because I kind of really know where everything is gonna be placed. So installation like I said is just quite more simpler and just like before I go in with that same blow dryer and this time I'm using the back of my edge control brush to just help push down the lace you just need something flat to help push everything down and really focus on getting those edges to be pushed After laying down my lace on both sides, I go in with that same mousse to help just re-swoop those edges and just make everything look nice and neat. Even though I don't have like any baby hairs, I do like the whole like swooped and like brushed back look on the edges. It gives like a very baby hair but not baby hair type of look. Cause just doing nothing, I don't know, it's just too serious. This is that little razzle dazzle without actually putting baby hairs to it. And in the most simplest way, that is really it for my reinstall. Honestly, this whole thing, when you think about it, is quite simple once you figure out the technique. It's not hard once you figure it out, but of course at first, trust me, I was just like y'all, stressing, sweating, having sticky stuff all over myself. I feel like I've really like found a easy way to install my wigs, but also keep them on for a bit of time. Usually these installs, if you're wondering, last me if I want to wear it overnight, last me about two to three days, well, three days most, without me having to take it off and reinstall. But since it's so easy to install back, sometimes I don't even wear my wigs overnight because I don't like my head being hot. My head gets hot. Like I said, I'm a lazy wig wearer. 
but I do like the routine of putting the flexi rods in and then having my hair tied up at night so I wake up in the morning it's just do a little touch up here and there and I'm ready to go but that is it for today's video here is the final look after the reinstall I want to give you guys a little bit of a quick review on the hair because I've been getting sent a lot of body wave wigs the same like same 250% density HD lace like same specs but I do have to say this one out of all the ones I'm doing is kind of like the standout star you guys know this is a sponsored video so I always feel a little eh when it comes to giving reviews on hairs that I didn't pay with my own money but I do feel like I wanted to mention this hair was really nice out of all the ones I've been getting sent as of recently it was very thick very full but mind you I do have the highest density so of course you should expect it to be very full and the lace out of all the HD ones I feel like has been HDing the most like I feel like companies will say HD lace but it's not actually giving HD lace but this one was it melted very easily not too much effort is needed it's this one my favorite the most is because it had clips on the side the back and the front and it had an elastic band and an adjustable band in the back because these wigs do not be coming up these days so overall i pretty i'm pretty impressed with it i really like this hair from what i can say you know my personal experience don't come for me please but with that said i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i hope i was help I was, I hope I was able to make your everyday wig wearing life a little more easier with some of the information I shared today. And if I did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, Girl Scouts. Goodbye.